What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today it's story time. I'm going to open up a little bit more about myself and my Christian experience these some 36, 37 odd years. Stick around. <music> It's weird, I think, for me to say I'm going to talk about myself. At the same time, I'm going to contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. But I feel like there's this thing that happens on YouTube where uh, as you get to know people, and, and I know this from having podcasted previously with a friend, he and I are very different people than who we are when the microphones were on. Um, and so this is, is, is a way of just kind of letting you get to know me a little bit uh, so that I'm not just this YouTube personality that I, I sit with a certain posture, I wear certain clothes, uh, I speak with a certain depth of my voice uh, on YouTube, which is really weird. Um, but so yeah, we're gonna, and, and, and the story that I'm going to tell about myself is going to be about my military career. And this actually does go out by request. Uh, someone had asked that maybe I should talk about this a little bit. Uh, a close friend of mine that, that knows me from my military service and has watched me kind of over the years throughout the remainder of my military service and then now uh, outside of it. So uh, if you're new to the channel, I would invite you to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, share any videos that you find helpful, and uh, like any videos that you think are well done. Uh, you can also look for me. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash 1517 films. And every Thursday evening, I'm at soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade, where we sit down with a tasty adult beverage and discuss theology. And then, of course, if you don't want to do that, that will also drop onto YouTube on Friday evening. So you've heard me make mention before that I was in the military. So this happened um, when I was in college. I think I joined when I was 22. Um, I was at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Uh, my major was pre-seminary at that time. Uh, I forget what my minor was. It might have been biblical languages. Um, I changed a lot. Um, <laughs> at one point, I even skipped the whole pre sem thing and went uh, secondary Lutheran art education as a major because I wanted to be an art teacher. Um, but uh, so I was at Concordia. Uh, I was engaged. Yeah, I was engaged. And uh, I don't know why. But I walked down the hall one day. And I saw a recruiter for the Wisconsin Army National Guard. And I walked right into my fiance's room. And I said, I think I want to join the military. And it would I mean like that. Like, <laughs> that's how it went down. Uh, we talked about what branch she wanted me to be a Marine. Uh, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I didn't even. I, I was the kid that um, uh, would try to get a note to get out of gym class. That was me. So I knew I couldn't be a Marine. Um, but I also knew I wanted to go to school. I also knew the National Guard helped. I also wanted to serve my community. And I, I, you know, I, I don't know why, but uh, I went back. I talked to the recruiter. We, uh, he was a great recruiter, too. He never lied to me. Um, some recruiters will lie, cheat, and steal to get you into the Army or into the military, and that's what MEPS is there for. They'll lie, cheat, and steal to get you out. So it's a checks and balances kind of thing. Um, he was really honest with me and he asked me a lot of questions and he found out that I was pre-seminary and he said, are you okay? Um, he said, Hey, maybe you should be a chaplain assistant. I'm like, well, what's that? He's like, well, you're not a chaplain cause you're not a pastor or a minister or a priest, uh, but they need a bodyguard. They're not allowed to carry a gun and they need a bodyguard. And the chaplain assistant assists with facilitating the religious needs of of their soldiers. And I'm like, hey, that sounds great. So I got that. Uh, I shipped out really fast. And I graduated uh, summer of 2005 from basic combat training in Fort Knox, Kentucky. Um, I went in as an E3 or a private first class. And uh, I did my split option training. So I went back to Concordia. I drilled on the weekends. Um, and then, I, and then the following summer, I went to my job training, my AIT, to learn how to be a chaplain's assistant. And um, I came back from that, 
no, 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 no. I wasn't engaged when I joined the army. I was just dating. We got engaged in the in-between, and then sadly, unfortunately, that ended. Um, there had been some infidelity while I was away at AIT, and the relationship, uh, uh, while there was forgiveness, the relationship fell apart. It, it was not sustainable. So I was single again. Um, depression set in from that, and uh, I realized, well, oh, gosh, all sorts of unhealthy habits. It was really hardcore depression, and... Um, it really was. I think I was cutting myself, too, actually. It was really bad. It was bad depression. And um, I realized one day at Drill that I was only ever happy when I was at Drill. So an opportunity presented itself uh, for a deployment to Iraq with uh, E-Troop 105th Cav out of Anago, Wisconsin. And I volunteered for that. And they said, well, we're just one unit under a larger battalion. They have their own battalion chaplain, and he's going to have his own assistant. Um, they, what was I going to be? Was I going to be S1? I don't remember what I was going to, what, what, what mission I, part of the mission I trained for. The mission itself was convoy ops. And we were going to LSA Anaconda, otherwise known as Mortaritaville. Uh, and it lived up to its name while I was there every single day that I was there. Woo, just mortars every day. It's a big base. Um, but uh, yeah, mortar attacks every day. Convoy ops was the mission. So uh, KBR tankers going from this base to the other base with supplies or whatever else. And we would be their armored protection um, and, uh, I was at that time, I guess what you would call a Lutheran, uh, I believe is the term. I was a new Lutheran. You've heard me make reference to, um, not having always been Lutheran. I was raised in the ELCA, which when I was in it used to mean evangelical Lutheran church in America. And now it means even lesbians can acolyte, um, or everything Luther cautioned against. Um, <laughs> it's not a Christian uh, denomination. It, it's uh, uh, pagan feminism with ritual and robes. Uh, it's it's a pig dressed up in lipstick and rouge at this point. Uh, so I was a traditional Lutheran with liturgy and all that, and then I never got a good explanation of why. So I went to this Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Church, that was fun and exciting and had big projection screens and a stage and a band, and oh, it was great. Um, but there was no biblical discernment, so I straight up, I was this close to being Pentecostal by the time I went to Concordia University, and my friends and the education itself dragged me into being a confessional Lutheran, kicking and screaming against my will. I was a new Lutheran, a new Lutheran when I went overseas. Well, we got there, and the situation dictated, actually, the chaplain didn't have an assistant. He needed me. And... Uh, Come to find out, he didn't have an assistant because he burned her out. Um, gosh, I feel really bad talking about someone who's who's in the military and who's signed up to, to risk their life for their country, but this man was a dick. Just a total dick. He was a graduate of Oral Roberts University, and anytime you asked him what denomination he was, I just do Bible. I'm like, I'm a Lutheran, we just do Bible too. It, it, was, it was a very abusive relationship that I had with this chaplain. I was a specialist in E4 at that time, and he was a captain. And uh, I'm not going to say his name on the video because I'm just not. Um, and he insisted very much that I should do everything his way. Uh, and uh, we got into so many fights all the time. Uh, we got into fights. I asked uh, to be relieved of duty for an hour one day um, to go to an Ash Wednesday service. And I got lectured relentlessly about the vain traditions of men. And you Lutherans, if you go one second over 60 minutes, which is not true, actually, because I've at it, it, my home church here now, service has gone an hour and a half sometimes. It, it, the, as I tell my children, there's no clocks in the sanctuary for a very good reason. Um, and your vain traditions of men. Um, he would argue theology with me all the time. Uh, I remember one time, he, um, now my role as a chaplain's assistant was to facilitate the, f the religious needs of the soldiers in the battalion. And he wanted to have communion 
uh, Protestant communion at one of his services. So I set up the trays, uh, wine on the outer rings, grape juice on the inner rings. Uh, I set them up on the makeshift altar that we had. I mean, we were overseas. And then um, I distributed the elements out. When he did some weird version of the words of institution, I set them back up on the makeshift altar and I went to the back. Crossed my arms. He stopped the service. He stopped the service. Uh, Specialist Porter, aren't you going to commune? No, sorry, I'm good, thank you. Are you sure? No, 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 you're having communion with us. This is in front of every soldier. No, no, sir, I'm not. I politely declined. Please go on with the service. Service went on. We get back to the office. Get in my office now. We argued, y'all, for two hours. And uh, this is <laughs> this is really the only time I ever got the upper hand on him. Uh, so I tell you this story to continue on with the other story. His pride and joy, his baby, his his uh, was his Thursday Bible study from the Greek, which he's not classically trained in Greek. I had more classical training in Koine Greek from Concordia University than he did. He just had a computer program that had the Greek on top and the English on the bottom. And it was on the book of Ephesians, and he made me go to his Bible study, not just to set it up, but to participate. So that was an abuse of power. So that was pride and joy. So we're arguing about why I didn't commune. And I said he he accused me, rightly so, accused me, you showed these soldiers there is a difference between you and I. And I said, there is. I don't know what denomination you are, and I'm a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. And we believe two very different things about what the Lord's Supper is. Well, I'd like to know what you think I believe it is. You think it's just a cracker and Welch's grape juice. It's just a memorial meal. It's just a symbol. Well, what else could it possibly be? Jesus said, take this and eat it. This is my body. Take this and drink. This is my blood. The new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Well, Jesus was being figurative. And I explained from the Greek how we know Jesus wasn't being figurative. Uh, He made me write an essay uh, defending my position on that. We argued for two hours, and that argument ended by him saying that he was a captain, and he didn't have to be talked to like that, so he defaulted to his rank to win. Uh, He made me um, read books on leadership, which I I could only serve to benefit from that, and then create PowerPoint presentations on these books. And come to find out later, he was presenting these to majors and to colonels and to uh, other troops in his battalion uh, as if he had done it. Um, It's funny, actually. He made me read a good book, a really good book, The Top Ten Mistakes Leaders Make. It was a really good book. Uh, And my entire PowerPoint presentation that I made was all the mistakes that I found from the book that he was making. (laughs) He never caught on. Um, So it was a, um, what's the phrase, baptism by fire for me as a new Lutheran to go to one of the most hostile places in the world to be challenged not only by the convoys that I would go on, um, with with the soldiers, but also to be challenged by the man who is supposed to be there to, to facilitate my spiritual needs as well. Um, there was a, a good, faithful Missouri Synod Lutheran chaplain there. I, gosh, I wish I could remember his name. Um, and he had a, a, a chaplain assistant that thought much like my chaplain. And so he thought, why don't we swap on Sundays? See, because I had to set up for his big band praise service. And I can remember, even as a specialist, getting yelled at by a sergeant, I brought the wrong kind of bass guitar, I think it was. And I told him, flat out, you should be happy. You're in a combat zone. You should be happy that you even have anything. Because when I go to my worship service, it's just a couple of men with some busted down donated hymnals that we're grateful to have. And we simply uh, a cappella uh, engage in Christian worship. And we're grateful for the opportunity. Uh, really ballsy of me to say something like that to a sergeant. Um, you know, that was just kind of the experience that I had on that deployment. I came home. Uh with early stages of post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, physical therapy. I had to go through physical therapy when I came back from that deployment because I could not open my mouth wide enough to fit two fingers between my teeth. Ooh, I biffed the microphone. Uh, I couldn't do this. I couldn't open my mouth wide enough to do that because I had ground my teeth so hard when I was over. My teeth are all janky. You can see it sometimes in the videos. Uh, from grinding my teeth. 
um, my my uh, cheeks had had solidified. Uh, felt like there were skittles there, so I had to go through all this physical therapy and had the the onset of post traumatic stress disorder. I was only home for eight months before I turned around and went on my second deployment with uh, uh, another chaplain, a uh, Wisconsin National Guard chaplain this time, uh, a, uh, independent Baptist chaplain. He was great. He wanted to engage in Bible study because he wanted to explain his position as a Baptist. He wanted to understand mine as a Lutheran. Um, and uh, so we did Bible study together. We were a, a great team. He was fun and entertaining. He was a brand new chaplain right out of chaplain school when we got deployed, which is the reason I had been promoted to sergeant at that point. And I'm like, no, you're not sending a brand new baby chaplain lieutenant out with a specialist who's never been deployed. I've been deployed uh, and I'm a sergeant. You're sending me. Also, my brother-in-law was going and he was a private and uh, he needed some protection as well. So eight months back overseas. That was a great deployment. Um, small base, intimate uh, ministry. We, we would do things like we'd run across, we'd fill our backpacks with uh, freezy pops and we'd run across the base trying to give these freezy pops out before they melted in the 130 degree heat. And we scared the hell out of a lot of people. <laughs> like, Chappy, you can't do that, man. You can't come running up to us. <laughs> we thought someone died. Um, I ended up being the NCOIC of the entire chapel before we left that base. Um, which was great. I had a bigger office than the chaplain. But from that deployment where there, I actually got to engage in some assemblance of, I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't say ministry, but I would say counseling, uh, bearing the burdens of lots of different soldiers and, and keeping them in absolute confidence and holding on to them and then bringing them home with me. Uh, little known fact about me, if we're going to be deeply intimate, I have post-traumatic stress disorder. From the from that first deployment, it was the early stages of it. And then uh, when I met one of my best friends when I came home because he had moved into my apartment with us, um, I had atrocious, atrocious post-traumatic stress disorder. Something would trip me and I would cuss uncontrollably for sometimes 20 minutes or um, break things or go cry in my room for an hour or, you know... Um, just, oh, I remember taking my mom to Las Vegas with my grandparents and having to explain to my grandfather, I'm going to get really stressed out at the airport and I might do something. And please, I'm begging you, don't say anything to me until you can tell I'm done. Um, I think I was heavily, was I, he, see, I have, my buddy says I was medicated when I came back, but I don't remember that. I self-medicated. I drank like a fish. Um, I would go out drinking every single night, several times. I should not have been the one that drove home. Uh, and then, then I had to mix myself a drink, uh, a 50-50 uh, Southern Comfort and Coke, 100 proof, half Southern Comfort, half Coke, just to fall asleep at night. And a month or so of that before I realized what I was doing, dumped it down the drain and committed myself to moderate alcohol consumption. But yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, it... <sighs> So this personality that I have uh, on YouTube, uh, I'm not perfect. Uh, I don't want anyone to think that. I'm, I'm a, a poor, miserable sinner, uh, just like everybody else. And uh, I rejoice uh, in, in the, the proclamation of the gospel that Christ was crucified for me. He was nailed to the cross for my sin, for the, the sins that I was committing uh, in the army, uh, uh, sins that I committed getting out of the army, uh, coming back from deployment, uh, a shame to say bringing home sometimes a new partner every night uh, to share a bed with. I mean, just a, a terrible, terrible sinner. Um, but through all of that was Christ maintaining and sustaining my faith there in his word and sacrament to say, I forgive you all of your sins. And the opportunity that I had uh, to serve my country and to serve the men and women uh, God entrusted to my care uh, and the chaplain's care, as I was really there to facilitate his religious support program. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm, I'm humbled. Uh, that when I die, my coffin will be draped with the American flag and they'll play taps 
and there'll be the the 21 gun salute um but i i just thought you know per, per, by request from a, a viewer and a close friend on youtube that i should open up a little bit about myself so when you watch 15 17 films i want you to watch it uh, from a standpoint of i'm a sinner too i need jesus too and that really should be our attitude when we bring christ to people is um is we we should um be like the we should leave church on Sunday telling people, I have seen the Lord. Come, come. Like the disciples did uh, as, as Jesus was calling them. They'd say, we found the one. They didn't really find him, though. He called them. And they'd say, We've, you know, we found the one. You should listen to what he, you have to hear this. That's what we as Christians do in this world. We tell people, there's this God man and you have to come hear him speak you won't be the same afterwards uh so that's a little bit about me uh my military service um i hope there was some gospel in that there was certainly some law in there what a horrible sinner i was and the victim mentality for a long time that i held about myself uh, and hated that chaplain for a very long time it was very hard to learn to forgive that first chaplain for the the abuse and trauma that he put me through and i don't know what he's up to these days I don't care to know. Um, oh, I hated him to such a degree that I, I um, resented the fact that he was saved and was going to be in heaven and I have to spend eternity with him. But these horrible things, nothing so horrible. The, 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 the sex and the drinking uh, uh, in the throes of, of diagnosed, being diagnosed with PTSD, uh, there's nothing that, that Christ can't and hasn't forgiven about my life. Um, that there's nothing that he hasn't redeemed me from. There's nothing so evil, and I've done some evil things in my life, that he can't forgive and doesn't forgive because he submitted himself to the will of his Father and in pure obedience allowed himself to be nailed to that cross to bear the wrath of God for all of the sins that I have committed. And from that cross, under that condemnation, saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's Jesus' plea for you. Father, forgive them. So God, in his preached word and the delivery of his sacraments, was, which bring to us his son, physically bring to us his son and the forgiveness of sins, God had carried and sustained me through eight years of military service, two deployments in Iraq, and now I'm, I'm a completely different person. I don't, I'm not even medicated for PTSD. I still have it. And it will manifest itself on occasion. Um, but that's, that's what my pastor is there for, to hear my confession. That's what he's there for, to say Christ has died for that sin. Christ forgives you. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Meet me in the comment section below. Tell me about you. I'd love to hear it. Until next time, may God richly bless you. And the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.